This is Dr. Drew Hall with Upper Cervical Healthcare, Los Angeles and Carson. Uh, today what we want to talk about is Bell's Palsy. It seems over the last few weeks we've kind of had a flood of Bell's Palsy cases, some of them uh, chronically having Bell's Palsy for over two years and a couple of them uh, only about a month or two. Uh, for those of you who don't know what Bell's Palsy is, Bell's Palsy is a um, syndrome that involves the seventh cranial nerve. Uh, we have 12 cranial nerves, uh, half of which are housed inside of the uh, cranium, and the other half which come off of the brain stem where the neck uh, and head meet. So the seventh cranial nerve is responsible for controlling the motor part of the cranial nerve, is responsible for controlling facial expression. You have three branches that come out around the ear and they're responsible for blinking, smiling, and like I said, facial expression. And then you have other parts of the nerve that control the salivary glands, tearing of the eye, uh, a little muscle inside the ear called the stapedius, which is a dampening muscle for loud noises. Um, so commonly, uh, people who suffer from Bell's palsy, uh, the way that it starts is they have a sudden onset of uh, unilateral uh, facial paralysis. So they may wake up in the morning and they're unable to open their eye, uh, move their eyelid, they're unable to smile on one side. Uh, if it's severe enough, they tend to drool out of one side of their mouth. And usually prior to onset, 50% uh, of the cases will feel a sensitivity to sound um, prior to the onset of paralysis. And so uh, it's not a very well understood condition. Medically speaking, they generally tell people to go home uh, and just give it time. And a certain percentage of people do resolve, but there's also about 10 to 20% of the cases that uh, have bells that uh, is over a prolonged period of time, for a year or two. The worst case I've ever seen is 16 years. Now there does seem to be uh, a correlation between uh, viral infection uh, as an onset, a precipitating factor. Also, a good percentage of them also have a significant stress factor in their life prior to onset. But as far as an underlying um, cause, there isn't really one. The etiology medically is unknown, which means they don't know what causes it. Now, from an upper cervical chiropractic perspective, uh, what we find interesting is that it tends to affect one side of the body and not the other. And so if it is virally related, why is it that one side of the body is affected and not the other? And so I want to shed some light on that from an upper cervical chiropractic perspective, why that may be. So we know that the weakest junction in the spine is the union between the head and the first cervical vertebra and the neck, which is this guy, it's called the atlas. These two joints right here is where the uh, head rests. So you're, you have a bowling ball that rests on these two little bones right here. And as we go through life, um, many of us are in car accidents, sports injuries, slip and fall accidents. Uh, there's trauma that goes uh, with life. And <clears throat> when you have a, a blunt type trauma, the top vertebra in the neck can shift out of position and lock, and it can interfere with the central nervous system. So in our office, when we have Bell's palsy cases, whether it's our Los Angeles office or Carson office, uh, our goal when they come into our office is to find out, do they have an upper neck misalignment that's impacting the central nervous system? Now the seventh cranial nerve is in the location of the head in the C1 area and the misalignment of the area can cause irritation to the brainstem and the associated spinal nerves and cranial nerve area through um, several different mechanisms, which we won't get into in this video. But what we do in our office is we run tests to determine whether they have a structural problem at the base of the skull, and if they do, then what we do is we take a 3D CBCT scan in our Los Angeles office, that's computerized, cone beam computerized thermography, CBCT, and basically what we do is we take a three-dimensional scan of the neck to see exactly how that vertebra is out of position. And then in our Carson office, we have digital x-ray, which is another imaging uh, way to determine how people are off. And once we know which vertebra is off, how their joints are built, how they're out of alignment, we then make a very precise correction to get that vertebra that's locked into the skull back into position to clear the central nervous system so the body can then function 
uh, more normally. And many of these chronic Bell's cases, and even the ones that have been um, symptomatic for two or three weeks rather quickly, uh, symptomatically they start to improve. So our Los Angeles, I've been in practice for 16 years. Like I said, we have two offices, one in Los Angeles. Uh, we tend to serve uh, areas of Hollywood, North Hollywood, Burbank, Westwood, Los Angeles proper itself. And then our Carson office, we serve the South Bay, which is Redondo Beach, Hermosa Beach, Rancho Palos Verdes, Carson, Compton, Cerritos, El Segundo. Uh, and if you're outside of those geographical areas and you've gotten a hold of this video on YouTube and you're somewhere else other than California, uh, we, if you call our office, we'd be happy to find someone uh, near you. So I hope uh, this video was informative and um, if you're suffering from Bell's Poly or any other chronic degenerative health problem, uh, it um, behoove you to check out upper cervical chiropractic care. The technique we use is Blair Chiropractic and uh, uh, to find a chiropractor near you, again, give us a ring. All right. Thanks a lot.